Yeah, we are live after a couple of false starts here. A really bad false start. Major flags all over the place. I mean, I don't know if it was our false start, but it is what it is. There was a false start. We're, we're troubleshooting right now. Uh, we got, we got technical issues. You said you sent me the link. Okay. Hi, people. Hello. Hi. Hi. Oh, yeah. And it just sent out, too. Okay. Here we go. Okay. We're going to build it back up. We had some technical difficulties is how we're going to put it, right? Yeah, man. Okay. So thanks, everyone, for those who have joined us. Hopefully, we're going to get a bigger group uh, as the, the hour goes on. But let's, let's get into it, Omar. I guess o o Odell Beckham Jr. is a big topic on this Thursday morning, now in the afternoon, uh, expectations. Yep, OBJ Day, as somebody's asking, maybe. OBJ Day? OBJ Day, somebody's asking. Uh, first uh, day of is spring. He, is he deserving and worthy of a day? That's a great question, and that's the big question is, are we, li are we liking this idea or not? Um, I'm looking at after spending some time watching his film, and I'm still going through it right now. Um, to see where he is and what he adds um, as a receiver because what he was in Baltimore wasn't what he'd been throughout his career. However, when I'm looking at the film now, um, what he was in Baltimore, which was a slant runner, a slot receiver, um, you're missing in this offense, and it could definitely help you. Now, would I do that over signing a guy like DJ Chalk? I don't know, but – uh, you know, or Michael Thomas, I, I don't know, but it really depends on what the price point is. Um, at this point, I don't know if I pay an OBJ more than five million a season, and and that's that's being generous. And you know and, what, and you know what he made last year, right? Your deal, huh? You know what he made last year, right? Fifteen, right? He made fifteen for one. By the way, let me address this right now, because uh, somebody asked me a great question on Twitter last night because i made the point by the way the important point with obj he's not technically an unrestricted free agent is he, he was, not he's not he was released by baltimore and somebody's asking how could you be released if he signed a one-year contract omar here comes your two favorite words what are they come Boy on years void years so he was released uh with the void year so technically oh. he's not an unrestricted mm. This is oh, interesting. So technically, anybody you release on void years, they don't enter the equation for compensatory picks. That's yeah. very interesting. That could become a factor later on in the game. Um, uh, yeah, void years, man. These these void years, they're just so highly disappointing. And so somebody made the point that goes, here goes your favorite organization using void years. So there, your beloved Ravens. Uh, you know what? And and truthfully speaking, I'm going to have to look at um, I'm going to have to look at the rest of the league throughout because I did this previously when I first discovered void years. You know when I discovered void years, um, Austin Jackson's contract. Okay. And the person who is my capologist put me onto it and explained the pros and cons to void years. And I purposely didn't like Austin Jackson's contract because of the void years and because his contract cannot be what could not be restructured. Um, unlike Sealer and Ingold and Durham, who all got new deals last year, their contracts can be restructured. His could not. Um, so the negatives, I'm still doing more research on the negatives of void years, but it's just very irresponsible business. No, but here's the point is, it's a trend that's growing. It's, absolutely, it's a trend. But what the Dolphins did with Smythe, Ingold, Sealer, and all that is how did they adjust their contract to lower the cap number? They added void years. That's that's what teams do. And, again, it's adding – if you're adding like a, a million three – because some of the players like a million point three charge in 2027 that the player is never going to see. Yeah. With the cap always going up. Mm -hmm. Your million three in three years is going to be worth what now? 500K? Mm -hmm. so I see the logic behind it, but there are certain players. I think Jalen Ramsey's void years numbers are in the four or five million dollar range, which is not insignificant. But that's a trend. And that's the way every team is doing it now. Um, I mentioned personally, I prefer, I would prefer if we're talking strictly from a, from a performance standpoint, 
I'd prefer Tyler Boyd or Hunter Renfro. Um, but I, those would count against the unrestricted free on the, the compensatory pick formula. Oh, and you're just you're just governing your compensatory picks. You're like, give me, give me, give me. No, this. If just, you don't think it enters the equation, Omar, if they have the choice between, let's say, an 8.3 receiver and an 8.2 receiver, and the 8.2 receiver is not going to cost you the third round pick that you're going to get for Hunt or Wilkins, they're going to go with the 8.2 receiver over the 8.3 or even an 8.4, 8.5 receiver. And that's what losers do. That's a loser's mentality. And they are a loser franchise. But anyway, besides whoa, that. Oh, whoa. Omar, apologize to the people right now. You're going to. He didn't mean it, gang. He didn't mean it. I meant every single damn word of it. Okay. Um, Again, if, this is where in – If you spent 15 years saying – If you've spent 15 years not giving two farts about compensatory picks and the last three years – No, two years in this F them picks mentality, now all of a sudden you're doing an about face and you'll be like, oh, man, we got to squirrel away these compensatory picks. You spent the last two years bragging about F them picks because you're in this win now mentality. So are we officially ending the win now mentality? Is that over? Is it done? Is it all in era done? No, I think they're trying to balance both equations a little, a little bit. And by the way, because you're going to get killed for your comment. of This franchise, all they do is chase their tail. All they do is chase okay. the Omar, I'm going to, I'm going to fire a shot at you that I'm sure a lot of Dolphin fans would do would. it. Okay. Bring it. okay. Loser franchise, except they have four consecutive winning seasons and two consecutive playoff appearances. And, and I how, know. how many playoff wins? Correct. Zero. For franchise with what? The longest streak of not winning a playoff game? Yes. Is that correct? Yes. But I, let's okay. not lump them with. Chase like, the tail for two decades. Correct. Man, I'm sound, I'm trying to be like a little bit more toward the middle, and you're like uh, full hater mode. You're the hater. No, 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 no. Even, and I was on board with the the rebuild, the tank, the purge, and Dave Hyde used to used to be like so annoyed, and it's age and wisdom that that put him in this position. That's what losers do, and. You took the loser route, and it it it's your your mentality and your approach and your philosophies change like the wind, and there's so many different ways to get up to the to get up to the mountaintop. Are we certain that this way is the right way now? That's this squirreling away compensatory picks by letting everybody that you developed go. Brandon Jones. They, they all got overpaid. No, 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 they no, all no. got overpaid. No, no, no. Tama, Tama, Tama. You can. You have no right. You have forfeited the right to rag on the Dolphins, letting Brandon Jones go for a comp pick when you've spent time and, and so much time talking about what a what a mad player he is. Come on, you can't have. He was a mad player. But I'm just saying, all all of these players and I, everybody but Andrew Van Ginkle got over overpaid. I'm that's. I am not arguing that. But okay. now, because other teams want your talent and you, they overpay for your talent, you're going to say, man, I can't sign this free agent because he might mess up my compensatory pick that I'm going to get for Robert Punt and 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 Christian Wilkins. Like, really? That's not what I said. Again, you, you're taking it to the extreme. I said if the difference is between two guys who are fairly similar, even though one could be a slightly better, I would, I'm not saying it's the right move. I am saying that I think what they're going to do is they're going to go with a slightly lesser player if it means keeping Slightly it. lesser player? Aren't you trying to win? That slightly lesser player is going to get you in trouble. At some point, you're going to be playing Tennessee Titans in week 12, and that slightly lesser player is going to have to be on the field, going to have to be contributing, and you're going to be slightly lesser of a team. And they are playing the Tennessee Titans in 2024, incidentally. Uh, and they are playing them – in Miami again, second consecutive year, and hopefully the it's not the same kind of collapse as we saw in that Monday night game, which was doubly damaging because that's the night that Connor Williams went down with uh, that nasty knee injury that has career threatening knee injury. Right, future in doubt uh, because of that. Uh, so going back to Beckham again, right now he he comes in, he's your third best wide receiver. 
Oh yeah. I, and, and I'm not turning my nose up at it because you know, I had wide receivers, a top five need for this team and yeah. probably yeah. would have put before free agency and probably would have put it as a top three need because when you look at what happened to this receiver unit, when Waddle and Hill were limping around or down, uh, offense was trash and nobody stepped up. And it's not like you had didn't have players. You had Robbie Chosen. You had Chase Claypool. You had Cedric Wilson, the highly paid Cedric Wilson. You have Braxton Barrios. You have River Craycraft. And nobody stepped up. Nobody, nobody, nobody stepped up. Nobody carried. Like, and here's my thing. Think about, and this is where I'm, I've always been in this, with this thought process. Think about Matt Collins. If Matt Collins was on this team, do you think he would have stepped up? Do you think he would have made more of a difference than the guys did? And again, I'm going to go yes. back to outside yes. of the outside of the Bengals last year. Name me a team in the NFL that had a number three wide receiver who would have been. I mean, you have Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle, who are what top five. As a you want me to name you a team with a number three? I'm, uh, I'm uh, just making the point, Omar. I'm trying to make the point. Okay. That having a third wide receiver who's not a significant drop off after your number two is rare. And then, the I, oh, there is going to be a significant drop off. I'm not saying there isn't going to be. Correct. But you, so not, what you had were Jags. Again, other than Tyler Boyd with Cincinnati last year, who to me was a stud number three. Let me find one. How many teams had a stud number three? Houston. Let's start Hank, there. Hank Dell, uh, Nico, Nico Collins. Collins. Who, was the three? who was the three? Farrell uh, Brown. Did Johnny Meacham play? <laughs> Tank Dell, Nico Collins, uh, Robert Woods. How many games did he play? When he hurt the whole year? I don't know. No, no. Um, they. I. I. I, I did like the receiving core. Um, let me. I'm just trying to. Uh, did Denver have a good three? I think they did. did what? Denver. Gordon Sutton, Jerry Judy, and who was the three? Uh, see, I can't think of them. Give me, give me, uh, Tim Patrick. Like I said, no offense to Tim Patrick. All right, I'll take that charge. Uh, let me think. Let me link Buffalo. Who was their third? They they barely had two. Um, they just signed Mac Hollins as their third. The Bills, yeah. Um, Curtis well, Samuel's there too. Uh, and I, I love Mac Collins. He's, he's one of the most coolest guys the Dolphins have signed in many, many years. Very good special teams player. Can we not pretend like that he's special as a number three wide receiver? I mean, come on. Okay, San Fran's got a good three trio. Debo, Ayuk, and uh, Jennings. You okay. going to give me that? Okay, that's two teams we were, we're up to right now. For, for uh, okay, I mean this is kind of boring podcast, but um, it, it, but I, I think you're going to have to make that point that it's not like it's not like the Dolphins were were like yes, like you know, in the, on their own by having like a major drop off. Somebody, Gary, I just said yeah, Chase Higgins and Boyd. I've mentioned Tyler Boyd, uh, and this is precisely. What I want there, there's a question that just popped up here that I'm going to have to go to because uh, I need to make a point here with this gentleman. Uh, might get ready for me. Uh, let's go attack some questions here. Trey, thank you very much. Just wanted to say I love the podcast. When are we going to get Chubbs and Phillips back? Any chance by week one? Wouldn't hold my breath expecting it, but never say never, especially in. So I'm not ignoring you. I can't okay. even hear you at the present moment. Give me a second. Okay, go ahead. No, no. Stop talking for a second. Um, never say never. The wonders of modern medicine. You have two guys who are very dedicated. Mm -hmm. uh, are going to do whatever they can. It's a tough. It's a tough ask, particularly I would think at this point for Chubb because the injury happened uh, Christmas Eve. That's a tough ask, uh, but I certainly never would say never. Omar, care to chime in? No, because I didn't hear you. I was saying I, I was actually sh putting out more uh, posts that were live now, so I had to mute you. What, what was the question? Oh, you had to. Wow, that hurts. Uh, the question was. Let me try it with you then. The question. Was, echo on the podcast. Come on, man. I'm being considerate to the crowd here. Good point. What the was the question? Was whether the question was from Trey, who was contributed generously to the podcast. Thank you. Uh, about whether there's any hope that Chubb and Phillips could be ready for week one. I'm sure there is. Um, nine months for Phillips 
is not out of the realm of possibility that puts him at September. Um, for Chubb, I believe he had his procedure in January. Um, nine months would put him kind of at the uh, at the end September October. Mm -hmm. um, and nine months is a really aggressive timetable. So for for ACL and Achilles. Now, freaks of nature have done it. So I'm expecting Jalen to at least be a freak of nature. I don't know where Chubb is in terms of freak of nature and work ethic. So yeah, I I conservatively put their return to clear to practice at October. I mean, return oh, to the football field oh, in October. Okay. I, I think you that's, that's overly pessimistic. I, I, I think there's a shot that it, it's earlier than that for, for Jalen. For September? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. I, wanna... I, 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 think, I think it would be very irresponsible of the team and knowing that, knowing how Mike McDaniel errs on the side of caution, I think it would be very irresponsible for them to begin the season not on the PUP. That's just me. Okay, but I want to clarify something about this error on the side of caution because I did this. Is, this has been some chatter on Twitter at times that I I, I don't buy this the, the this thing, and I I hope the narrative stops that Mike McDaniel is saving players for Jan December and January games. Let's stop that. Okay, he what he doesn't want is to put a guy back earlier than he should be back, and then have an injury that lingers on for a lot longer. I.e., Robert Hunt last year. Um, mm -hmm. But this notion that's like. Oh, it's a September game against a team that we should beat anyway. No, nah, you're, you're fine. You could play, but no, you're fine. Yeah, that, that's that's overblown. I don't disagree with you on okay, that. Let me address my good friend Mike Mike M here. Omar, before you answer the, this question, Omar, this question is for is for you only because Alan blocked me for being too hard on him. But with a lot of these signings, look like Greer is turning this team into physical brutes. What do you think? No, Mike, I blocked you because you were being a jerk and obnoxious and constantly taking little shots, little shot, little shot, and you would not stop. Okay, big for being too hard on me. Are you serious? I, I don't. I don't. I don't. Mike, apologize in the comments, and I will. I will work very hard to get you unblocked. Put your Twitter handle, and I'll, I'll lobby. I'll lobby him for you. Um, well, I, you know what? I'll I'll unblock you after the podcast. Stop being a jerk. That's all. Okay. Yeah, ahead. I mean, I, I love I love when people get blocked and they're like, I don't know what I did. Oh, just check your timeline. Yeah. Um. Just take your timeline. Look for the at Omar Kelly, and, and you you probably would understand why you got blocked. Um. Yeah. People. I and I I respect you for blocking people because uh, it's about protecting your own personal peace. Um. What was uh, um the physical? You know, and I know my my former colleague Chris Perkins. He wrote a column in the Sun Sentinel about all these guys are going to bring the toughness and the dog and. It's great to talk about in March. And I know Poyer is a dog, and I know Poyer brings a toughness. And I, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Is Jordan Poyer known for being a hitter at safety, or is he known for being a, a, a ball hawk with very good instincts Oh, and, and being a yapper? Um, listen. Let's be if honest. You, if you yap, you got to back it up. I, and, yes, he's a ball hawk. He's a good player. I mean, you don't make it double digits in the NFL without being a good player. Like, think about it. They, just give it a real – guys don't don't like sneak into the NFL for double digits if they're not really good players. Nobody ever said he wasn't. I mean, he, he took a step back last year, and then if, if he can go back to his form and it was not a sign of age decline, yeah, he's a very, very good player. Um, go ahead. I, I like the way that they talked. They clearly know that this team needs to add toughness and a, a different mentality. They, they, and I, I stand by this, and I do truly, truly, truly do mean this. They need more dogs on this team. And there are a lot of good players. There are a lot of good athletes. There aren't enough dogs. And when I say a dog, um, and I had one player try to define a dog. I can't remember which player it was because he was mentioning it, and I was just like, "Okay, define a dog, please." Well, that was a couple of days ago. Uh, Shaq Barrett, wasn't it? Well, maybe it was Shaq Barrett. Um, and I don't know much about Shaq Barrett, so I don't know if he's a dog or not. I could ask people who played with him to tell to tell me. But players clearly know who's a dog and who's not. Jarvis Landry's a dog. Um, <laughs> you can go again with Jarvis Landry. Stop it! Stop it! Uh, I'm giving you examples. Mike Mike Pouncey is a dog. 
Um, uh, give me, give me. Arshon Lynch was a dog. I'm giving him dolphins. Oh, okay. Sorry. Dolphin examples. Dolphin examples. Um, uh, I liked, I liked, um, who's the safety that, that Miami had Rashad Jones, but he wasn't a dog. Um, Jabril Wilson. Why are you bring, you pissing me off now. Like, <laughs> Jabril, oh, you making me tell the Jabril Wilson story. No, 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 no. Don't. Yes. Oh, no, I love this story. You. I love this story. Oh, my God. Did you going to bring it up again? His teammates hated him. Like, <laughs> oh, okay, I'm, I'm not going to let it go. That's that right. that was probably the worst player teammate I had ever seen in a Dolphins uniform. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mike, allow me to chime in. And I'm going to give you even more reasons to hate. No, I don't. No, the Dolphins Randy are not. Randy Starks was a dog. Sorry? Randy Starks was a dog. Absolutely. No, the Dolphins are not turning into physical brutes in the least. In fact, you look at some of their offensive acquisitions, the key ones. Aaron Brewer is an athletic, mobile, uh, on-the-move center. He is not going to pound you straight ahead. John Smith is an H-back type tight end who's great after the catch, and he's a good receiver. He is not a physical brute. Um, and so those are the names. On offense, they're still going to be a finesse offense. That's just a fact. I mean, are, are they going to have a little bit more physicality to them on defense, though, would you say? Would, would you would you entertain that? Who no. I, I, Jordan Porter is not as physical and in, in at safety as, as either Deshaun Elliott or Brandon Jones. He's okay, a, what about, okay that's fair. Player, that's right? fair. That's fair. What about what about uh, Jordan Brooks? He brings a little Jordan, bit more physicality than, than, than Jerome Baker. Does he, though? Maybe, but that's not his calling card. His calling card is the way he moves. He's a great athlete at linebacker. That's his calling card. So, no, sorry. And then the, the 17 defensive tackles you signed, I mean, I don't know that. First of all, we can't even we can't even tell us, say which one's going to start. So the idea that one of them is really going to turn. It was up. only eight. It wasn't 17. Don't exaggerate. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no. Sorry, Mike. No. Would you would you say George, uh, Christian Wilkins was a dog? Yeah. Oh, and and. Absolutely. And the way he agitated, he's a massive agitator. The, the the funky stuff he kept doing, especially to Josh Allen. You mean grabbing sacks? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's very good. That is very good. Well done. Yes, well done. Yeah, the, sacks the, the, sacks. The, the culling of sacks? Yeah, yeah. Getting sacks and grabbing sacks. Very, very well done. Um, yeah, no, he was a guy who would get really your- make you a dog, though. It wasn't only that. Okay. It wasn't only that. This is a guy who, who you, there are plays. There's a clip. He is getting blocked at the line of scrimmage. His helmet comes off, bends down, picks up the helmet, turns around, and chases the guy to make the tackle 10 yards down the field. I mean, that, that's. Did he put the helmet on? Yeah. I got to see that play. Somebody sent me that play on Twitter because I, I don't recall it. What, what what season did it happen? It was last year. It may have been the Buffalo game at, at home, I believe. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, it was very, it was really, really impressive. And then there's another play, forty yards down the field. Obviously, this wasn't a good play because it was like a 40, really, really long gain, and it was Christian Wilkins hauling his ass down the field who made the tackle. Jalen Ramsey's a dog. You sound like you said the debate. Uh, uh David Long has some dog. Yeah. Yes, David the- Long has some dog in him. Jalen, by the way, for those who think I'm keep keep dissing Jalen Ramsey, yeah, he's, the guy's a hell of a player. He's a complete stud. I'm not quite sure I would go dog, but we can quibble on that. Businessman. Yeah. Oh, hold on, here we go. The finisher says, "Alan, stop the hard thing, brother. It's a terrible look." LOL. Just for you. Just for you. I lo- I love the hard thing. You keep it going. Thank you very much. Uh, so now Schefter is talking about. One year deal according to one year deal with OBJ according to, to Adam Schefter. And of course Is it he, done? Of course he would agree to terms while we're doing a live podcast because of course. Uh mm-hmm. let me just confirm. Go ahead and look at some questions here. Um oh you want me to look at questions? Okay. Go ahead while I while I look to confirm this because I don't see it. Is OBJ a better option than Michael Thomas? 
Um, I happen to think that he would be a better option. I'm looking at the film. I'm, I'm truly, truly looking at the film, and I didn't know what to expect. Um, and I, while there isn't a lot of productivity from him, um, he really played. Let me give you the breakdown. Um, he he caught. He he averaged 16.1 yard, yards per reception, which was a career high. Caught 35 of 64 passes thrown his direction. Only had six starts. Um, contributed 565 yards at and three touchdowns. Um, it wasn't. You know, catch radius was 54%, which was, you know, not that great. Um, but he did play. Let me give you this the amount of snaps that he played this season. He played 465 snaps, which is basically 50% of, of the snaps. So he was like the number three receiver uh, uh, in their offense. And the production was solid. It was a lot of slot work. It was a lot of slant work. Um, and when I when I looked at it, it looked like exactly what the Dolphins need. Um, and I'm actually in the process of writing a column for alldolphins.com now before I knew of, of the signing, allegedly. I don't know. Is it finalized? Is it official? No, I don't see anything on there. So Yeah, that would probably come from Josina Anderson, who is ODB's uh, mouthpiece before it comes from um, Adam Schefter, just for the record. Um, and I love Josina, so don't take that as an offense. Um, Josina is probably one of the only female NFL insiders and a legit insider who will, will break story and break news and get it directly from the players. And that doesn't happen in, in this business very often. Um, so I, I have a ton of respect for Josina. So and ODB, it that's that's ODB is. Oh, Josina is. Let me know, BJ. ODB. Huh? What's old dirty bastard have to do with the Dolphins? Oh, oh, um. OBJ. 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 Yes. Oh, damn. You know old dirty bastard? Hey, I'm hip, man. Holy I'm crap. Don't let, let the look fool you. One song. Name one song. Zero clue. <laughs> oh, man. I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed you know ODB. OBJ, I'm sorry. Um, OBJ would use Josina, so monitor Josina's timeline, and she'll let you know what's going on with him. Um, okay, hold, hold on. I'm gonna and I'm gonna say this. I saw the Ravens play quite a bit last year. How did didn't, didn't see all these games? Jesus Christ! Like because, because I don't I, I don't watch a ton of sports anymore. I used to be like a complete freak. I don't watch a ton of sports anymore, but I watch as much NFL as I can. Um, and I'll be honest with you, he didn't. Didn't really stand out to me, and then I reached out to a buddy in Baltimore. It was like they really target him that much, and he, it wasn't anything spectacular. Um, wasn't worth 15 million dollars. No, somebody I like that likes the point. So, Kim Kardashian will be Miami's Taylor Swift. LOL, hey, if it produces the same results, right? What, what, what was that? I missed that. What do you say? Oh, so Kim Kardashian will be Miami's Taylor Swift. LOL, I guess. Why, he dating Kim Kardashian? Yes. I guess you're making a face and reminder. She all once dated another former dolphin player or a former. Dolphin oh, player, Reggie. Reggie Bush. Yep. Damn. I need to look this up. Kim Kardashian and oh, you're intrigued by that. Aren't you? And she just gets around, man. Stan the man says they are. I need to see a picture of them together. OBJ on Super Bowl week. Okay. All right. I need to see images. Somebody tell me, sorry, Omar. Somebody tell me Brooklyn Zoo. Is that an ODB song? Yeah. Okay. Why, why are there no pictures of them together if they're, they're supposedly together? Because you, you act like everything that she does isn't in front of a camera. That's a very good point. <laughs> Pupar, you officially got your hood card today. <laughs> no, he'd get his hood card if he could name a song. He could. Zero, zero chance. Sorry. So, oh gosh, um, what's this? Do I get, do, Omar, do I get it if I get a couple of Kanye songs on my on my iPhone? Couple what? Kanye songs on my iPhone. Does that no, work? No, I can't. You can't. You can't support Kanye. So I can't allow you to support Kanye. Okay. Um, Sean Sullivan says Omar really wants to sabotage the fins as long as his favorite players get paid. What? 
What? He's right. He's got you. You got busted. Got what? you. Wait a you minute. About your players getting paid at the cost of the Dolphins' team success. Absolutely. Who are my favorite players? X, Robert. I told you X, have a, haven't I told you X was getting cut for a year? And all, no, but you wanted him to get paid. Come on. I, own I, it. Own I, it I, oh, no, 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 no. I wanted X to get paid when he was good. I know X need, and X knows he's going to get a cut and get a pay cut. X is about a $8 million. He's a Kendall Fuller S salary kind of player right now. Um, that's what happens when you turn 30. The, the, the league look, treats you like a dented can and they want a discount. Um, Kendall, I know for a fact, because Kendall has told me he's not playing for $2 million. He'd rather retire than do that, which, you know, he may, hey, it may come to that. I mean, no, no offense. He, and he is absolutely fine. If that's the case with, with as many teams that need offensive line help, if he can't make $3 million, Kendall ain't playing. And I understand he's like, it's not worth the work. And he's got enough money to, and he has other things that he wants to do with his life. Now, does that mean that he doesn't want to play? No, he wants to play, but it, it, it's got to. And guys who I've seen this so often with guys who hit close eight or above or double digit years, they know the work required for what they're doing. They've got enough money saved up and they're not doing it for just the compensation. And if the compensation isn't right, they're not doing it. I know about five players who could still play who've walked away from the game because teams were offering them less than six million dollars, and they felt like they were they had been used to getting paid more, and they were worth more. And they're like, "Yeah, it's not worth the work for six million dollars." Um, now, that's I am not I don't live in their tax bracket, but really, you know, oh god, you don't even want to know the tax bracket I live in. Uh, yes. Um, but it's, it's, you know, to each his own, everybody has a dollar. Like I used to say, when I was a younger reporter, if you're not paying me $50 an hour, I'm not doing it. Like, it's not worth my time. Like mowing my lawn. It got to a point. What? When, when was this? Oh, for freelance work all the time. If it's, if it's not like. And I, that's how I determine things. Mm. If it took me two hours to mow my lawn and somebody's trying to pay me, trying to charge me $50 to mow my lawn, here, it's yours because it's not worth my time. And so certain players know exactly how much work they have to put in to be a good NFL player. And if they're not going to be compensated for that work, they're not going to do it because people think that playing NFL is like a, it, it is a, it is a privilege. It's not a luxury. It's it's a lot of work. It's a oh, it's, it's, yeah. It's a nasty grind. Yeah, it's a lot of work, and people want to be compensated for that work, and I, I respect that. Um, I I don't I and people are like oh Omar always roots for his friends. I root for my friends to get paid, um, and to have success wherever they are. Um, I don't, I don't care if they play for the Miami Dolphins or not. I really, I really don't. I, it makes no difference to me. No, no, that's, that's fine. And then that's I, 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 I will cheer for the, to Carolina Panthers every Sunday now. And I'll watch their games just because of Robert Hunt. Like love Rob. What about if they're playing the Dolphins? Which they're not, but what if they were playing the Dolphins? I, I, I Damn. I want to see Rob because Rob was always intimidated by Christian and wouldn't like, wouldn't like, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Christian, Christian, you know, Christian acted like a booty cheek all the time. Well, he's and got I, a very big personality and, and Rob's kind of like a laid back, easy going dude. Yeah. 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 And Christian used to punk Rob all the time. And it always used to bother me. I'd be like, bro, why you take that? He's like, oh, that's Christian. That's Chris. And so I really want to see them play a game against each other that really matters. Not, not like a practice where you can't hurt one another or you got to be considerate to one another. Like, I really want to see Rob play Christian. I, in like a like and, Vegas and Carol. I really want to see that. Because and they will in 2024, Omar. They will. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to be watching that game because at Vegas. Because 
I you me- you remember how Rob uh, Christian used to abuse Liam? Like I I Christian was the Grinch that took Liam's confidence. Like it was <laughs> so like, you yeah. laugh, you laugh, like, exit, not like exit the park, like exit the Devante. Yeah, it, it was it was so abusive, and I I and I, I was like, man, like somebody should do something about this, and nobody ever did anything about Christian, and it is what it is. Okay, man, we went on a tangent over here. Uh, James Cirillo, thank you very much. Chubb and Phyllis won't be back until midseason and not at 100%. You sure about that? Yeah. AVG and Agba are gone. Barrett in his 30s is the only addition. Why does Edge not seem like a priority in draft slash free agency? Because they can go and sign guys like Malik Reed. Malik Reed after the draft. And add uh, Melvin Ingram after the draft, and just hold in September. Them. Huh? In September. Yeah, and just hold themselves down until they need it. Um, and I don't agree that Phillips and and Chubb will be mid-season. I think maybe they'll be at. You always hear guys say, "Yeah, I came back, but I didn't feel better until the ne- very next year." And I'm sure that's going to be the case, but they're going to be out there. Yeah, and I, I would add, I'm, I'm not so sure I agree with you. Your premise that it, that it's not a priority just because they haven't signed anybody other than yeah. Barrett. I don't. I wouldn't be shocked if their first round pick, for example, was Latou from UCLA. Uh, Chop Robinson from Penn State's probably going to be gone. Uh, Look at you, knowing your draft. Well, I know some guys, and then in the second round, I wouldn't be shocked if they went for an edge defender to build up the depth, and also because. Based on his contract, I don't know that Bradley Chubb's going to be around for a long period of time. So they'll need somebody at some point. And it's not Shaq Barrett, who's a long-term solution. So, again, and especially if if we're shooting the idea that the Dolphins are going to go BPA, if your BPA comes in the first round and the second round and it's an edge defender, pass rusher, yeah, the Dolphins – should go for that, and we'll have a use for that sooner rather than later, and then or both. Right? No. Wait. You're giving, you're giving me a look like what the hell's he talking about? Yeah, um, that was my thought. Um, yeah, I read. I read your. I read your face now. Yeah, you're like yeah. The the unfortunately, my ex wives could do that too. Um, you are putting me in that category, really? Yeah, I, I'm very transparent. So whenever I hear bullshit, I just be like, huh. Um, whoa, 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 where's the bullshit? Th- there isn't. Um, we know we know Chris Greer is going to do BPA. What is BPA? It might be a cornerback. It, knowing him, no, we it, don't know that he's going to do BPA because again, I'm going to go back. Austin, how do we not know he's going to do BPA? Austin Jackson, this this BS that first of all, every single solitary GM will tell you we're going to pick the best player available, and then a lot of times some GMs will go with a player at a position of need. Austin Jackson, 2020, he was not the best player available at 18 that year. Sorry, but they had a massive need for a tackle. 2020 NFL draft. I'm going to look it up. And you're going to tell me that Ryan Tannehill was the eighth best player? That was not Chris Greer. Let's not put it on him. Okay, okay. But my point remains that that's what. Mm, Okay. Um, At 18. We're really going back to the 2020 draft. They could have had Justin yeah, Jefferson. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's um, but was receiver. Yeah, I uh, ju- listen. Nobody knew Justin Jefferson was going to be Justin Jefferson back then. He wasn't even like the 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 can't miss prospect in this draft. Damn. There were other good players around that spot. I recall mm-hmm. Jordan Brooks, Patrick Queen. Yeah. Hold on. Hold the fort. What? 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 What Hold happened? On the fort. Okay, I'm holding down the fort. Um, Austin Jackson was the best tackle. You're, he's right. Austin Jackson was the best tackle, and you didn't want to end up with the leftover tackles, which were Isaiah Wilson, who had a cup of coffee here before he went crazy, um, and uh, Ezra Cleveland in Minnesota. Um, so they, they certainly – went tackle to avoid reaching um Josh Jones. Is Josh Jones still a good player? Is he still in the Josh league? Jones just signed with the Baltimore Ravens. Oh yeah? About that. Uh no, I mean he went 
This is his third team, I believe. I think he's got Arizona and then some other team. Um, no, yeah. if you remember that year, there were five big tackles. The Dolphins really wanted one, and four of them were gone by pick 14. I think Tr Tristan Worse was a lot, or pick 13 or 14. Yes, and so are you saying that um, that that Austin Jackson was one of the five? Yes, okay. he was one of the five mentioned as possible first-round picks, and that clearly to me was, it was a neat pick, so... Uh, Matthew says Ezra Cleveland isn't terrible, but judging by last year, Austin might be the best of that group. Uh, mm -hmm. no, Andrew Thomas is right now might be the best of that group. Certainly not Mackay Belton, Be Becton, not Jedrick Wills. Tristan Worth is pretty good too. Um, yeah, I was going to say Tristan Worth is pretty good. I was going to say to me, I think Austin's in the middle of the pack here, back there. I'm going to be mm -hmm. honest. About it. Yeah, I'm looking at that draft. That draft wasn't a very good draft, but yeah. Yeah. It is, it is. Okay. Uh, Jadavin Clowney should be their next target. Man, we're going to go down that route again. That'd be, that'd be uh, he, he, he has some interest from somebody. Uh, yeah. Who? New York Jets. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, I was just looking at looking that up, trying to figure out what the – there's going to be some pass rushers that will sign late, especially after the draft. So I'm not, I'm not really – I'm, I'm – I'm not really in a rush. Uh, there is one. Is it Shaq? Not Shaq Lawson. Um, one from the Jets. Uh, that I've heard there's interest in. Was he a free agent? Yeah, he's a free agent. I think they cut him. Give me a second. Let me get you the name. Uh, Carl Lawson. Okay, all right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everything's. Um, Greer, Greer goes BPA, but only drafts premier positions early. Is yes. Defense, is, that, is defensive tackle a premier position? Well, according to Christian Wilkins' salary, it is. It wasn't wasn't back then. It is now, but it wasn't. No, he, he drafts defensive tackles early and then doesn't pay them. He doesn't give them second month round money, second second contract money. So. Uh, uh safety he he's drafted two safeties early i don't i don't know if there's any any rhyme or reason to how chris greer drafts no i do believe he, he's he's a bpa guy um i remember i i talked to him for like 15 minutes about draft philosophies and rhyme or reason and and things of that nature and you know learning from mistakes and and that draft we specifically talked about the Deion jordan draft and you know what they did at, at in that draft and the lesson learned from Deion jordan was um don't draft players at positions that you have not seen them play projecting them for positions that you have not seen them play mm -hmm. and you know who was selected that year um, charles harris uh, and they drafted a guy projecting him to play a position that they hadn't seen him play. So yeah. they just make shit up. Oh, excuse me. They just make things up. Whoa. Uh, Mike Amp to show there's no bad feelings uh, asking about Kendall Lamb retiring. No, Omar has has mentioned several times that he will re that he, he has said he's going to retire rather than, than play for less money than he thinks he deserves, but it's not – yeah, um, I'm not sure what's going on with Kendall Lamb, and I'm not stressing it, not worried about it. Kendall Lamb knows what he's worth, and he's seeking that, and maybe it comes to him after the draft. Um, you know, with Dan Feeney, who was a disaster and a backup here, who got traded, made $3.25 million on a one-year deal, Kendall Lamb ain't playing for a dollar less. So, what did he earn last year? Uh, like one point two. Oh, that that little. Yes, very that's, little. Yeah, that's that's a little that's a little harsh. Uh, Kendall, whoa, Yowza's base salary last year was one point one six five with a hundred like. dollar signing bonus. Yeah, whoa, that's yeah, he, yeah. He needs he needs to get his little. Little bump right there. Uh, we had another question here from Birthday Salami. Okay. Wait a minute. How, how do you get the name Birthday Salami? I, I need that. I need yeah, that. Answer in the comments, please. We'll, I, I'm a salami man. Are you a salami man? 
I'm just asking a question. Do you like salami or not? I like pepperoni, be pepperoni better, but I do like salami. Okay. I mean, I'm saying as a lunch meat, like I will yes. buy ham or turkey. I'm a salami guy. I like salami. I like Literally. turkey. I like turkey salami. I never had turkey salami. Okay. Well, try it. Then. Try it. Then you can knock it. Anyway, thank you for the contribution. Aside from more of an inclusion of tight ends, what evolution do you anticipate happening with the offense? And why doesn't McDaniel roll out two or more a la Jake Plummer? Ooh, let's start with the – leave that question up so I can not forget the different parts of it. Let's start with the first question. Um, while Jake Plummer is the original quarterback for this offense, I don't think they're absolutely reliant on the player being an athlete. However, that was the orig origin of them drafting Trey Lance. They wanted the athleticism element to replace Jimmy Garoppolo, and I think they subsequently found out, hey, we were being stupid. Um, let's just get a manager and an, exec an offense executor like Brock Purdy. Um, I don't think it benefits rolling. One, when you roll a guy out, you are splitting the field. You're cutting off half the field. Tua operates best when he's got the full field use, okay? Um, and while Tua has athleticism, he's never going to be mistaken for an athletic quarterback. So I don't necessarily feel like that's... What? Speak, speaking of, of, of what? He, he has athleticism. He'll never be mistaken for an athletic quarterback. Go ahead, explain that did one. You not, did you not understand that? How you're did right. That... I didn't understand that because if you have athleticism, you're an athletic quarterback. He's 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 athletic enough to run and scramble and gain a first down. He can run for three first downs a game. He, he's he's got that ability. He's Look at Dan he, Marino. No, he couldn't stop lying. Uh, <laughs> run for a first down if the field's wide open. Second 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 half of his career, he damn sure couldn't. So stop lying. Um, he could run. It's just not in the cards. And, and I don't like athletic scrambling running quarterbacks. I don't necessarily see the benefit of it. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily benefit you offensively. So stop. <laughs> Josh <Okay>. Allen, <laughs> Lamar Jackson, you're right. No benefit whatsoever. Long-term because ultimately they're going to take the hits and they're going to shorten their career and then they're eventually going to become Cam Newton, who is the size of a tank. Um, so you can you can like look at Lamar, and look at Patrick, and look Josh later. Let Josh started doing it a little bit more, but they run in playoffs, in pivotal game, you know, season defining games. That's when they'll run. They won't run every week. They'll and and Mahomes will scramble every once in a while and gain a first down. But they're not putting they're not putting their their bodies at risk and jeopardy just because oh they're athletic and they can do it um, or they're at least trying to call it down. Uh, what was the second part of that question? See, this is why I told you don't. Well, that was it. dude. I mean, how many, how long are you going to take to answer the question? It was, Man it was, paid his money. He gets his answer question okay. answered. Yes, it was rolling out, and there was also anything else that's going to be added beyond uh, getting the tight ends more involved in the. They need game. a slant running receiver. And I think that's what Beckham's doing. I, I, what, 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 what? Say Dude, it. Like, like they haven't made a killing with the, with the, like, like deep, the deep play with Tyreek and Jalen already. I think, I think. Yeah. I, I, I mean, that's a byproduct of what they do for, from a speed standpoint. Mm -hmm. They need a slant running receiver. The slant, the, Tua is an amazing slant ball thrower. Amazing. Yeah, a, don't give me that look. Stop it. You know, you know who the metric said was the best at that particular throw last year? Who? Josh Allen. Of course he is. Um, because he's of course he is. Um again, I'm just I, I'm just like easy on the amazing. Go ahead. No, 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 no. I'm talking about from college. From college. Not not yeah, we're not in, we're not playing in college anymore. This is not the all hurricanes podcast or the all crimson tide podcast. It's the all <laughs> dolphins. Can you podcast. be respectful and hear me out? Can, 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 can you? Can you? So in his career at Alabama, like steady diet, 40% of his passes were slants. Now, obviously, he's got talent out the wazoo where guys could do whatever they want all over the field. Um, four first rounders on one team as a receiving unit. But the slant was beautiful. And 
I, I initially, when I discovered two, I'm like, this guy can have a steady diet of 10 slant passes per game in the NFL, just throwing that pass. And I thought he'd really come alive with Devontae Parker in that play. And it's just not, it's just not because he throws it right where you can catch it. Only you can catch it. You get down. It's, it's such a pivotal part of his game. And he, yeah, it's there in Miami's offense, but do you really want to run a slant with Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill and then have them have them get blasted? Mm, but dude, you know. they've made the Dolphins have made a killing. And yet, and yes, Tua throws a very good slant. I'm I'm just I'm just busting chops. He throws a very good, I don't know if it's amazing, but he throws a very good slant. Um and the Dolphins have made a killing the last two years with that at the numbers, right inside the numbers, 15 yards on the field with Tyreek and Jalen completely open very quickly and Ty and Tua seeing them very quickly, getting the ball very quickly and accurately. Yes. That's been easily, I mean, eons their best play. And next then, level. sorry? They could take it to a next level if they actually got a good slant receiver. J Jalen Waddle and Tyreek will never be mistaken as slant receivers. We're getting, I mean, it's not the quick, hard slant like you saw with Parker that they could do. Kerr, I agree with you, where he uses his body to shield the receiver. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, but yeah, so add that. Maybe John, and maybe that's what they have Johnny Smith do for a little bit. That's true. But ODB, when I'm looking at the film now, that's what he does. That that's his game. You called him old dirty bastard again. Damn. OBJ. Yes. That's what he does. I that's his the game. name of the song. <laughs> I forgot the name of the song. <laughs> I was gonna pop it up and say, give me my, my hood card. <laughs> you like it raw that's what it is <laughs> that's the name of the song uh oh baby i like it raw yeah um i don't remember what the name is. Shimmy, shimmy, uh, shimmy, yeah, shimmy. okay anyway let's yeah we, um, we digress yeah uh it, it, i i you know i initially was like what sense does that make even when you text me last night i was like what sense does that make and then i started looking at the film and then i'm like oh okay this is like this is about the slant. Oh, okay. Mike McDaniel's trying to make the slant come alive in this offense. But not he's also not big, and he's also not gonna he's not gonna make he's not gonna last it like necessarily all that long running over the middle. No, who okay. cares? Wow. At this at this point, at this point, <laughs> if that's what you do and that's your role to protect my two top guys from doing it, then you got big old catcher's mitts, which he does have. Uh, come over here and catch these slants and earn some playing time and earn 500 snaps. Um, you didn't have a single player on the roster who could do it last year, not one. So, or uh, maybe Chase Claypool could have. I don't know what happened there. Uh, must yeah. not have been a good practice player because obviously, not. okay, let's move on. Phil, thank you very much. Omar could not agree more with the Chase the Tail comment. This organization needs conviction. And we will not get it with Chris Greer. That is accurate. Factually, factual statement. Chris Greer is not a man of convictions. He's not. That, that People who've worked with him, worked against him, he's a chameleon. He changes with the, the backdrop of, of his surroundings. So he's a survivor. He is not a man of convictions. And this is not debatable. Plays on, along nicely with others. Yes, this is not debatable. So... Whatever is the flavor of the week, flavor of the month, that's what they're gonna. That's what they're gonna do. And right now, it's giving everybody void year contracts. Uh, God, four oh, more void year deals. This is ridiculous. Oh, this and is then awesome. people like Alan Papard are gonna complain. Oh, they've got twenty eight million dollars in dead cap now in two thousand and twenty five. That could have been five good players. Oh, 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 oh. see, but the dead cap is real. And I'm going to be like, well, you wanted void years in your deals. I never said that. And do I sound, do, 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 do I sound like that? Yes, really? you sound like that. Yes. Yeah. Oh, man, I'm going to work on my Omar impersonation. And just, <laughs> then, is a, is a yeah, it's, you got to start with the facial expressions, don't they? <laughs> um, Omar, do you like O B O D B O D B or Cedric Wilson more? <laughs> Sorry, can Cedric Wilson rap? Hey. You know I wasn't a Cedric Wilson fan. But can he rap? 
Can he rap better than ODB? Uh, Teron Armstead can rap better than ODB. Teron can actually rap. Duke Crowley also, I think, is good. Rifleman uh, was. Yep. Yeah, Rifleman, yeah. Uh, do you see two are getting a deal this year? Yeah, I do believe it's going to happen. Uh, I don't think I need to state my position on the matter, but yes, I do believe it's going to happen. I don't know if it's going to happen. Really? I don't think so. I don't know. Really? Um, we, we have we have gone from it was a foregone conclusion to I knew I knew it wasn't gonna happen before March before started free agency. Like I'm sorry, this is the biggest deal in franchise history. You think it's just gonna be like magically pop up? Like no, no. But, no but we also know that th this is the feeling. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and is that feeling gonna change? That's that's Mike McDaniel's feeling. Mike McDaniel doesn't give out money. You and you don't think it's shared by Chris Greer, maybe Tom Garfinkel, maybe Stephen Ross as well. Maybe it's Marvin Allen. Okay, yeah, yeah. But you know what? You, I, I think they'd also like to see him win a playoff game and be the leader that he is. He's destined to be. Oh, and stop it. Oh, I, I tell me, ask me how much I love it when you throw out. He's destined to be. Says he's, who? Says who? Says says the cards of destiny that's who says says are you the cult the cult leader or are you just one of the main the main listen, officers Tua is going to create a new generation of samoan players in the nfl just like junior Seau did he is destined for this this is his destiny you are you are absolutely in a cult number one that you that you that you because you use the word he is destined to i mean you're not even saying this is what I believe is going to. You're saying he is destined to, and no offense, it, to put him in the same category as Junior Seau. I mean, what? there is an aura about Tua that you will not put respect on. There is an aura about Tua. Come an on, aura of, an aura of a guy who can't win, who can't raise his game against major opponents late in the season. That's the come on, bro. Seriously, come on. There is an aura about him. There's a presence to him. That that's this is why there's two anon. This is why he's a he's one of the national household names. This is why he will be face of the French, a face of face of the NFL in 2024. You're gonna put some respect on his name. You will. You will. You guys know any good deprogramming centers for 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 cult members like in Pick Omar? Listen, Holy moly. He has I know you've said it before. He has it, whatever that. It I is. can't say that. I'm waiting has, for it to show up, but he's got the DNA of somebody who can have it. He is destined for greatness. He is destined for greatness. Hopefully. So, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got to win. You got to win the game. For greatness, hopefully. That, that is awesome. Of course, hopefully. But you can't say if he's destined for greatness, it, that means it's a fact. It's going to happen. Wow. By the way, birthday salami answered the question. That's his uh, handle because on his birthday, he prefers charcuterie over birthday cake. Are you a charcuterie board salami? I'm not a charcuterie board guy. But then again, I also don't like cheese. So that just kills <laughs> half the board. No, it kills one third the board because there's fruit there. Sticking around to hear Omar call OBJ OPP by accident. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, well, OD, that. OPP. Um, uh, charcuterie boards actually have crackers, meats, cheese, and fruit. Yes. So I'm only out on one of them, which is the cheese. So I guess I should like charcuterie. But I'm not, I'm not a sandwich and cracker guy. I'm not a meat, lunch meat kind of guy. When's the last time you had meat, meat in your mouth? <laughs> Little Griff Whalen reference there. Um, what was I gonna say? Uh, and see, for me, I think I think th that charcuterie meat is kind of like some of it I like, some of it I don't like. Um, so anyway, and I like the crackers, I like the fruit, and I like the the cheese. Some of the cheese, I don't like all of the cheese. So there you go. Best offense podcast, Jerome. You are the man. I'm gonna put it up here. You are the man. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Jer Jerome, for supporting and sponsoring and, and showing up. And, and really, we really thank everybody who watches our podcast regularly. Again, this is how we support ourselves and feed our families. 
Um, if you when you sub, when you click the like button, that's important because it helps our algorithm. When you let the ad play and don't press skip, that supports the revenue. Um, every little thing helps. Everything matters. And thank you for getting our numbers back to where it was in beginning uh, before the Dolphins did it absolute nosedive in the season's final three games um and hopefully we'll continue to deliver for you um okay. hold on franklin can you go back in the comment and explain this to me you're talking about Tua. everyone has to grow okay hater pupar first of all he's been in league four years number one number two he I can't go uh, he can't see this is my beef with you because he's been in the league for four years he sure. can't grow and get better sure. Sure, but to say it's destined to happen to me, all due respect to me, is completely ridiculous. To say that I believe it'll happen is a difference, but this idea of like he's destined to be that, yeah, I no. think he's destined for greatness. Okay, I didn't say he's destined to grow. Uh, uh, and, but and let's but, but you're 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 you you act like you act like a quarterback can't get better in year seven of his career. Like wasn't Matt Mo, Matt Ryan like really good in year like ten of his career? Wasn't he an MVP in year 10? Yeah, when they completely stacked the team around him. And then and when and Tua has had an offense built for him, stacked for him with the fastest, the fastest offense in NFL history. Okay. And with that, he's produced, he's produced numbers that you like to pump out at every occasion, except exactly. except when things aren't perfect around and, and it gets late in the season, they play a tough opponent. Where's the production? Sorry. Yeah, it's the same old, same old song you play. Same old song all the time. Same old two-step. Okay, where was his healthy players? Where was his playmakers? Your top three offensive weapons are both out or injured. Is it is it possible that maybe and this is again when when you don't have like because Patrick Mahomes really had a stud supporting cast on Patrick that. Mahomes is Patrick Mahomes. Stop comparing anybody to Patrick Mahomes. Lamar Jackson is Lamar Jackson. Stop comparing anybody to Lamar Jackson. Okay. I'll let you compare him to Josh Allen. Let's let's do that. And let's there, no, there, no, there is no comparison to Josh. Josh Allen is all due respect, is clearly significantly laughably better than Tua. Please come on. Please. I didn't say that he wasn't, okay. but let's compare him now. And your little boy, homeboy, Justin Herbert. <laughs> not that he's got not that he's got no <laughs> weapons. You have to throw him. Let, 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 we don't have any weapons. Let's co let's compare them now and see how much he's going to be, how much they're going to be able to carry a team, especially when Buffalo loses Stefan Diggs, who's quietly trying to force his way out of that situation. Let let's see how they do then, because right now, like you 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 everything everything is anti to it. Everything is no, and on. this everything you're is, wrong, Eric. I mean. Eric, well, I just called you my son's name. Omar, <laughs> Omar, you're wrong. It's not It's not everything. Is, is And Franklin also, he has flaws. You act like he's trash. No, we don't act like he's trash at all. I'm pushing back against Omar's comment that he's destined for greatness. He's destined to be the face of the NFL in 2024. He will, oh, he will be the face of the NFL in 2024. Yeah, I know. And, and, and I think at, at least admit that. Admit that. It's la your comment is laughable to me, Omar. And this will is he like, be the face of the NFL in 2024? No, he and will be one of the five faces of the NFL. No question about it. What do you think they're going to make it, Tyreek? And then December, and then December, Tyreek so is still going to be the best player on this team, and he's still he is. The one he legitimately is. the MVP candidate. And, and the so great. media, sorry, they, they put the Dolphins on TV. I promise you, those pregame shows, it was Dolphins every 15 minutes. Because they draw ratings, they draw talking points. They they are a, a, a highly entertaining team. Now let's hope they are that this year too. But they're gonna put Tua's face up there, it, it, right there with Mahomes and Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts and because he's a quarterback, but not because not because he's the one who makes that offense hum. Like I've said many many times. So okay. anyway, sure. still gonna be facing the NFL. Okay, whatever. Uh... Okay, Alan, answer this. If Tua wins more Super Bowls than Josh, would he be a better would he better or still no? Well, it depends. It depends. And and Mike, by the way, Mike, and this is cool. This is respectful. And you can we can we can agree and push back on against what we each other say. That's fine. Um again, it depends on how those Super Bowls are won. 
because again, and this is where I'm going to push back against this annoying to me to no end, this one loss record thing where everybody's and and I've seen it lately a lot, like tours record as a starter. That's fabulous. Jay Fiedler had a better record as a starter in his first four seasons with the Dolphins. Was any ha- anybody happy with him as a quarterback? Look it up. He was 35 and 17 in his first four seasons as Dolphin quarterback. And there's not one person who wouldn't have switched him off for somebody else in a heartbeat. So like, let's stop with that thing. It's a team game. But at, there are times if everybody needs help, needs help around him as a quarterback, everybody. But there are times when the quarterback has to do a lot of heavy lifting, and this is where Tua has come up short, unlike other quarterbacks who have not. Okay. Well said. Don't have any rebuttal. All fair points. It's, there's accuracy there. Whoa. Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I, he's got to show up. Right. He, he didn't. He and didn't I'm work. not saying it's going to happen. I'm saying I have my... I have my doubts that it's ever going to happen. And I certainly don't think it's, he's destined. We'll find out. He's destined to grow and learn from what he did last season right. and get better. Just like he's done all four years. But there's an athleticism ceiling. That's always going to be there. And I, and I, I, I get it before somebody. I'm, I'm not fight, yeah. I'm not fighting you on that. All about athleticism. Okay. I'm not fighting you on that. The athleticism, there's going to be a ceiling there. He's not Josh Allen. He's not Patrick Mahomes. He's not Lamar Jackson. He's not uh, uh, Justin Herbert. But but he's got he's got a lot of Joe Burrow there. No, no. I mean, two is always going to have like a bottom third of the NFL starting quarterbacks arm strength. Okay, that's fair. I mean, that's always going to be a problem. Throwing outside the numbers is always going to be a problem because it requires. Better timing. The, the margin for error is a lot smaller than it is for somebody who can zip it in there. That's just that's a fact. Not fact. Bad. Not arguing it. Nate says he doesn't have to. He is the Samoan sniper. What, I, what I, I work out down the stretch. Okay. Uh, the NFL was nowhere near as pass heavy during feeder years. You're absolutely correct, Jeff, but that wasn't the point. The point was he still was 35 and 17, and every Dolphin fan after the 20 the 2003 season would have been, can we get a better quarterback than that? And the Dolphins went out and traded a second round pick for AJ Feely, who had been a backup with the Eagles because they thought he could be better than than Jay Fiedler. So uh but da, da, da. How are we feeling, Omar? We're going to keep going a little bit, or we're about to wrap it up. Yeah, let's get let's give it another three, four minutes. Uh, so, if you have any questions that we haven't addressed, put them back in the chat, and and we'll get to them. I don't want to comb through the new, the the old stuff. If um, Omar, if Tua crapped the bed the way Lamar did last season, you would be running him out of town. If you want, I can give you a list of athlete quarterbacks, athletic quarterbacks who were not as good, we're not good enough, just like Lamar. We we're really going to compare to it to Lamar, really? Did you watch any games other than the playoff game against Kansas City? Raymond, did you watch the Monday night game against San Francisco? Did you watch the Dolphin game at Baltimore? Really? You're going to go there? Did, did Lamar crap the bed in that game? Really? This wow. gentleman, Walt Dog asks, what does Miami do at 21? Or did you answer that one already? BPA, baby, BPA. Interior offensive lineman, D-tackle, or pass rusher? You draft the tackle and you put it in on the interior for year one. If there's somebody there who merits it. Superfish, thank you very much. Time in the pocket affects everything. The O-line health and performance are imperative for two at the Blossom. Here's the problem with that comment, Superfish, and thank you for the contribution. If, if, every, if every quarterback in the NFL has a lot of time to throw, Every game is going to be 45 to 42, 51 to 48. I mean, seriously. And this is precisely the point that things are not always going to be ideal, and that includes time in the pocket. So, yeah. um, What was I saying? Uh... Oh, interesting. Somebody just sat here. 
Paul, knowing where you got the stat, but that's a very good, very interesting stat. On March 11, 37 NFL players had void years. It's uh, probably doubled now. Correct. Well, Dolphins have, what, six more now? Wilson, Ramsey, Chubb, Armstead, Ingold, Smythe. You, know, you know how I feel about void years. How do you, like this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, more like a toilet, toilet sign. It's like a should flush it. Kiko Alonso was not a dog. Love Kiko, not a dog. Um, Amber, thank you, Amber. What's her birth record as a starter? Who cares? Oh my God, that they killed anyway. Oh no, yes. no, no. I'll, I'll address it. Allen Williams, awesome running back. When it's Herbert, you say the wide receiver can't stay healthy. When it's Miami, injury is part of the games. Um, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams played. I don't know exactly the numbers, but it was insanely, ridiculously low number of games together at the same time. Awesome running back. Austin Eckler's an awesome receiving running back. That running game was garbage pretty much every year. The Charger defense was traditionally ranked in the bottom third, bottom fourth of the NFL every year pretty much. Uh, so there are factors around, and I don't know that we're going to argue Herbert versus Tua because I'm going to say it again. Ask any ask any GM, any writer outside of Miami and LA, Herbert or Tua, it's 95% Herbert. So there's obviously a reason for that. And it's not 90% Herbert. 92.5. I don't know if I'm supposed to counter that. I still say 90. Okay. Pete's takes. What's you guys' favorite prospects for Miami in the draft? Cam Kitchens. Caleb Williams. No reaction, Omar? Caleb Williams. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, you can get him on the second go around. Um, I like Fotanu from Washington, but he's not going to be there at 21. He's a tackle. Who you, can, you play a guard for a year or two, and then you move him out like you did with Laramie Tunso. That would be great. Chop off his end would be nice. Go ahead. I don't begin my draft process until after we come back from the owners' meetings because it's futile to be studying positions at players where they address it in the draft. So um, now I'll begin the draft process after next week after we sit there and we talk to Mike McDaniel and, and Chris Greer about their moves and their efforts to rebuild this team. And and we'll, we'll have that next week So from the owners' meeting. Oh, I like this one. Brennan, thank you. First of all, it's P-O-U-P. -P. Thank you very much. If you look at my last name, it's the first four letters of my last name, but knock yourself out. What's your plan right now at QB if Tua is not the answer? Why does it have to be right now? All I have said all along is the Dolphins should let this play out, have Tua play on the fifth-year option at $23.2 million, which is still a very fairly low cap number for a starting quarterback, and revisit next offseason. And at that time, then you assess the possibilities. That's all I have said, What and, and I have said it's borderline uh, mismanagement to lock him in for a contract where you're going to be tied to him for another three years, which will be seven years by then, with still not – practically not one standout performance against a quality opponent down the stretch. Um, this is an important name, uh, Clayus Campbell, mm -hmm. um, primarily because I know him personally. Um Calais is a glass eater, it's a legendary guy in terms of how he carries himself on and off the field. He had a very good season last year with the, who was he with? Atlanta Falcons. Atlanta very, Falcons. very good statistical season. Um, obviously, teams are going to be looking at him as a dented can and want a discount. Um, he does have history with Mike Weaver. And I think, I really think that that would be a great addition for this team. In terms, it would help them so much because he has the position flexibility to play defensive end and defensive tackle. So I could see him working really well next to playing next to Zach Sealer. So keep an eye on that. Keep and, an eye on that name. And I hate to do this, but I agree with you. I love me some Calais Campbell. I think yeah. he's, a, he's a not only that he's a he's a always been a very very good player. He is a leader type. That he's a dog and he's a leader type who's going to mentor all those young defensive linemen that they have. And there's a tie here because he played at the University of Miami. Uh, mm -hmm. Would love that move. The question is, 
how much I had, actually I had this over the cap page. He's like 14. He's like played 14 years, which is ridiculous. I remember, oh, yeah. I remember him when he was being recruited at UM as a basketball player and was going to play tight end. Like time flies, man. I'm getting old. Spoiler alert, you are old. Sorry. Um, he he may had four million dollar guaranteed salary last year. I don't think that's egregious. I would I wouldn't have I wouldn't have an issue. And, and he can he can help you right away. When I say right away, I mean right away. He yes, he's aged, but he can help you from a cultural standpoint. He can help you in every aspect of the game. I agree. Uh, um, let's wrap it up with front, a couple more questions. Um, somebody, uh, Caleb is awesome. Don't really like the Bears as a landing spot, but he'll be good. Okay. Joe Milton is my man crush now at quarterback. Joe Milton, you know, because I'm an arm queen, according to Omar. So I knew you'd like Joe Milton. You how, can you, how can you how can you not love that arm? I mean, did you see the one at the combine? Holy smoke! I, I you know what? I like so many Tennessee quarterbacks, and they never pan out for me. They never pan out. Uh Smith, then thank you very much. I don't think I've heard the term "void year." Omar, are you falling asleep on me here? You want me to do a very quick explanation for? Please, uh, go ahead. Okay, void year is team takes. A player's base salary converts it into a signing bonus and then spreads it out over several years beyond the original term of the contract, where the player has let's three years down the line has no salary because he's not going to be on the team, but has a prorated portion of that signing bonus you just gave him. That's called a void year. And Omar loves it. It's trash. But hey, it's the way of doing business now in the NFL. As we continue to skirt around oh, real it. money, real salary. Osman, please tell me I'm pronouncing this correct. Osman Mondragon, thank you very much. Love the show. Are you guys going live on round one of the draft? No, absolutely not. Oh. Omar just answered. That's Thursday, that April 27th, I want to say. Uh, we will take it under advisement, consider it. Uh, maybe, we'll maybe not. I don't know. We'll discuss it. No, we won't. There you go. Okay. No, we won't. Omar doesn't want to do it. Yeah. Uh, like, I can't. Mm, don't okay. want to. Did Amber, you know? again. Thank you, Amber. Didn't answer the question. What would you say if Tua gave up 27 point lead to Jacksonville? Herbert is Chad Henney. What was Tua record with Devontae as wide receiver? One still winning record. Poops it to a hater. Okay. A couple of things over here. I, I'm sorry, I didn't. I missed a part where it was Herbert by himself who gave up the 27 point lead, and it wasn't the Joey Bosa stupid penalties, the defense not making a stop. Uh, I think then there was something else that happened in there. Uh, so I really don't remember that. Or perhaps you didn't watch the game and you just saw 27 nothing. They lost the game and decided, boom, it was all on Herbert. But that's fine. Uh, two was record with Devontae as wide receiver one. Two was record in 2020 was. Uh, they may have been six and three. One of those was a win against Vegas that really belonged to Ryan Fitzpatrick. And then, uh, and if you want to go there, he had a winning record because the defense kept coming up with takeaways that season. And Ryan Fitzpatrick easily was the better quarterback on that team. But okay, I'm not a two a hater. I am somebody who will fight back against. He's awesome. He's great. He's all that. He's destined for greatness and all that and, and make points. He's a, he's a good quarterback, sometimes very, very good, except he has not risen to the occasion like you need a quarterback to. So I hope that answers your question. Mm -hmm. Any chance, Joe, Jose, Jose Cabrera, any chance we get Simmons at safety? I would say nope. Um, if they were going to do that, they probably would have done it already and not signed Jordan Poyer. And anybody, anybody that anybody that's back there could be viewed as um, a progress stopper for Javon Holland. And I don't think they're I don't think they're going to add Justin Simmons. 
I just I wish they would, but I don't think that's that's in the cards for them. Totally agree. I, I think yeah, it's you kind of overkill a little bit over there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but da, 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 da. yeah. Uh, Jason Myers, we've been nine and eight, nine and nine, eleven and seven the last three years. People say winning record, like it's impressive. You're you're factoring in the playoff loss. In that the- is impressive, actually. Nine and eight, nine and eight is it's a winning record, but it's but and again, we're we're measuring it against the bar of a Dolphins team that how many winning records before that since 2001 was it 2008, 2016? That was it. No, sorry, 0203, they had a winning record, and then that was kind of it. Mm-hmm. Okay, I think that should about do it, right, Omar? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, we appreciate you for drop the line, Omar. Let's let us let's let us up. What? Let okay. Me. Nothing. I can't tell what that what that guy means. This one. Can you read it? Drop the link. Oh, drop the link, Omar. Let us. Let us up. LOL. I don't know. What link is that? I don't know. To a piece that I've written. Something. I don't know. Um, love you, people. Appreciate you. Continue to thank you for continuing to support us. Um, we see 536 of you here live. Hopefully we've answered all of your questions. If you didn't get them answered, put it in the comment section of the chat of this podcast and we will address it. All right. We thank you. We love you. We appreciate you. Wish Pupart a safe trip and, um, wish me happy birthday while you're there too. Oh, it's your birthday. I thought you, it's my, birthday birthday. it's my wife's birthday on Friday. It's my birthday on Monday. Happy and, birthday. And our wedding anniversary on Tuesday. Busy week. Birthday, birthday, wedding anniversary, boy. Yep. Probably made a baby in March, too. Uh, and that would be April, actually. He was born, oh. born in late January, so. All right. Okay. At least, yeah, paid attention there. Mm-hmm. Um, all righty, folks. We appreciate you. We'll see you. We'll see you. When we see you. (laughs) We'll see you when we see you. All right.